Good evening, everybody. Happy to be here. Uh, I wasn't uh, exactly sure what to expect, and uh, you've introduced me as someone who would speak about the old SDS, which I could do, and I'll try to do that a little bit. I was the regional office coordinator of SDS in New York City from April 1967 until December 1968. And that was an exciting time in the growth of the organization, a few years after the hazard story. Uh, we had some of the monumental demonstrations uh, in the uh, New Left history took place during that period of time. The, uh, of course, we went down to uh, Washington, D.C. for the Pentagon demonstration in October of 1967. And then we very sh shortly followed that up with a demonstration against the then Secretary of State Dean Rusk over at the Hilton Hotel. Uh, I had already had my first arrest slightly earlier than that, protesting out in front of the Plaza Hotel uh, at something called the Foreign Policy Association annual dinner. And then one thing led to another, and uh, we had the uh, incredible uh, rebellion at Columbia University, which to my absolute amazement, will be celebrating the 40th anniversary of that, uh, those building takeovers, and uh, the, the next April. Uh, there's going to be a conference up in Columbia and people who are interested can plug, plug into that. Uh, I haven't really thought of my life in comic book terms, my, maybe not as much as I should have. Uh, I did, <laughs> I'm sort of doing it for the first time, trying, trying to get in a groove here. Uh, there is one important uh, thing that I, more than anything else that I learned from the comics, and, I, and it's something that I think about almost every day, but certainly every day that I'm trying to do a project around my house. Like this past weekend, I, live, I now live in upstate New York in Albany where it's considerably colder than it is here. And uh, I was desperately trying to get some storm windows up. And I was rummaging through my toolbox. And, uh, and the thought that was going through my mind was, Mr. Natural, <laughs> use the right tool for the job. I have to say that's the most important lesson I ever learned in life. It has served me so well as, as, uh, as we've gone about our business. So, uh, of course, our crumb and, uh, is a big influence and uh, um, still you can read it in the New Yorker if you want to today. Uh, I, but I was advertised and, and, and told by Paul to sort of represent Weatherman, which is uh, a controversial outgrowth of SDS. And uh, not, to, uh, not to take too long on it, what I wanted to do about that is I wanted to read from a book. And the book is a book called Sing a Battle Song. It's called The Revolutionary Poetry Statements and Communiques of the Weather Underground, 1970 to 1974. It's edited by myself, Bernadine Dorn, and Bill Ayers, and it was published just last year, so it's fairly fresh. And uh, uh, there's some interesting stuff in there. And in it, uh, each of the three of us wrote essays in which we try to explain why, in many ways, we feel, well, we, we try to identify the threads that run from our previous lives to our current lives, because we're all still politically active. Uh, I, I, I should say that I'm primarily active in the environmental movement. I work with a number of different environmental groups, and I'm also the uh, New York State coordinator of something called the Apollo Alliance which is a coalition of labor, business, environment, and environmental justice groups working to create green jobs in the new energy economy. And that's usually what I talk about, but I'm not going to talk about that tonight. I just want to share what, and, and I, I should also say, I have no idea what a cartoon history of SDS is going to look like, but I can't wait to see. Uh, I just want to share uh, something that I wrote, uh, maybe two little quick pieces here about what, what, what it was that drew me to uh, Weatherman, and I'll, I'll uh, an an annotate it if I need to. You, you, some of you may or may not know that it started, we started as a faction of SDS going into the tumultuous 1969 convention, which really marked the beginning of the end of SDS. There were several different factions there. And uh, we wrote this paper that was just unbearably long and impossible to read. And, uh, and yet it had some value. The original Weatherman paper, written to be discussed at the June 1969 Convention of Students for Democratic Society, attacked the unequal distribution of the world's wealth and, in true Weatherman fashion, famously announced that those of us living in the heart of the imperial empire 
we're going to have give we're going to have to give some of it back. Quote, all of the United Airlines Astro Jets, that dates it, all of the Holiday Inns, all of Hertz's automobiles, your television set, car and wardrobe already belong to a large degree to the people of the rest of the world, we announced. We were outraged that a country with 6% of the world's population consumed 40% of its resources, while billions of people were cold, hungry, and poor. That disparate distribution of wealth continues today. We are still a country with about 4.6% of the world's population, yet we are responsible for 29% of the global emissions of greenhouse gases. And despite a growing awareness of the threat posed by catastrophic climate change, clearly visible from New Orleans to the Arctic to Bangladesh, our government not only refuses to act, but hinders and subverts those governments and institutions that do. In fact, our government is very busy right now in Bali, Indonesia, doing exactly that. Viewed through the lens of popular history, Weatherman is an artifact of the 60s and 70s. Defined by its tactics, bombings, and street fighting demonstrations. In that sense, it does belong to the past. But the real essence of Weatherman was the moral revulsion we felt at the impact of imperialism and racism on people's lives, especially in the developing world and in black and Hispanic communities in the U.S and our belief that resistance was necessary. In 1969, we were thinking about the exploitation of human labor and natural resources and how U.S. corporations were stealing both from underdeveloped countries. This theft was a primary justification for struggles of national liberation. But not only corporations and the wealthy benefited, all Americans shared to some degree in the plunder of empire and were therefore not only privileged, but at least passively complicit in the imperial project. I became convinced that it was not acceptable to stand on the sidelines and support other people as they risked their lives in the struggle for freedom. It was my freedom too, and in Weatherman I found a way to fight. Not exactly comic book stuff. That's <laughs> what I wanted to share. Uh, let me just read one. Uh, I'll, I'll let it go at that. I, because uh, I, I really look forward to the discussion that comes after this. Um, let me just see if there's anything else I wanted to say. Um, no, except looking at your thing, Nick, uh, I just remember some incredible hitchhikes through the Appalachians that, were, <laughs> that I never told my parents about. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.